CNS oxygen toxicity is the, the primary issue that technical divers have to deal with. All right, now let's look at hypoventilation. And what we really mean here is that the alveolar ventilation is so low that the carbon dioxide rises above where it should be homeostatically, and that causes hypercapnia, too much CO2. So it's important to remember that you can be apparently hyperventilating, your total ventilation seems to be very, very high, but you're really not getting enough alveolar ventilation. Well, the, the story of operational oxygen toxicity actually began during the Second World War with the, the Tenth Light Flotilla, which was a unit of the Italian Navy who specialized in uh, uh, terrorizing uh, British and Allied shipping in the Mediterranean. This is a, uh, a combat swimmer over here who's uh, just getting dressed out. Uh, this is, he's got a breathing apparatus, uh, oxygen rebreather on his chest. This is a limpet mine. What he will do is enter the harbor in, in Gibraltar. He'll swim on the surface to about uh, 100 yards away from the, uh, his target ship. He'll submerge, go on bag, make the rest of the way underwater, and uh, uh, put the limpet on the side of the ship. If they wanted to, to go from a, a little bit further difference, distance, they had these, these uh, uh, manned torpedoes, and they could go from several miles and underneath the ship and perform the same uh, uh, services with a, a larger warhead up here on the, on the front of the torpedo. They were all using this closed circuit pendulum rebreather. So what we're going to do uh, in the following slides is, is look at the model of the probabilities of convulsions, definite or probable symptoms since it's a, a little bit more sensitive. And what we see here are the, the U.S. Navy oxygen exposure limits. This is uh, from the 1942 uh, uh, limit, and you can see that's way off the map here. Uh, this is from 1954, right here. It's come down a bit. Uh, 1963, actually it went up a little bit longer, and these are the the limits that uh, uh, the green ones are, are which are in the current manual. Now, you'll note uh, that according to this simple model here, there's still uh, some substantial uh, uh, predicted risk up there. Well, actually, the way the, uh, the Navy SEALs dive right now, uh, they, they flush their breathing bags in such a way that they don't start the dive with 100% oxygen. Now, let's look at another a very interesting set of dives, and this was done recently. These were uh, is Israeli Navy combat swimmers, and this was a paper published recently by Ariely, and uh, there were 2,500 dives by 473 uh, uh, combat divers, and these were to depths of 7 to 23 feet. The, the oxygen, uh, average oxygen was found to be about 91 percent, so that meant that the oxygen partial pressures were anywhere from 1.1 to 1.6 atmospheres. Now, they also looked in a, in a separate paper at the divers who became unconscious, and, and this was, was really pretty cool. They took the divers who had uh, uh, become unconscious, they grabbed their rigs, buttoned it up right away, they brought them into the laboratory, and they put them on an exercise bike for 10 minutes, and they were able to do this with, with 10 divers. And, and while they had them exercise about one liter a minute, light work, they measured the inspired CO2 in the, uh, in the breathing gas. And what they found was two groups. One group of seven divers had a low inspired CO2 of two-tenths of, uh, uh, of a percent surface equivalent, and you're allowed 0.5, so that was okay. None of those divers had any loss of consciousness. The other group had high CO2, a mean of 4.2, and, and that's getting up there. And four of those um, became unconscious. What partial pressures are safe? Okay, the first thing to remember here is that the choice of acceptable risk is arbitrary. There is no limit that you can set that says this is it. For an individual, it's personal. But you've got to remember, factor in all the knowledge that you have about the unpredictability, unpredictability and the consequences of seizures, the variability between divers, O2 and CO2 interactions, such as in shallow water blackout, and these possible effects of pharmaceuticals. Uh, so, individual personal choice. For an organization such as the Navy or DAN, 
It's a political choice. 